get ready for more Kirkland's inspired DIYs, this time with a modern farmhouse and boho feel. And as always, DIY treats. Welcome to my channel, Craft, Eat, Repeat. It's Aneka and welcome to my channel, Craft, Eat, Repeat. So if you saw my last video, then you know that I've been doing a lot of online window shopping, I guess I'll call it. I've just been browsing through some websites of some of my favorite stores like Kirkland's, Anthropology, even Target. I miss my Target runs. And I decided to do some farmhouse inspired DIYs from the Kirkland's catalog in the last video. Those DIYs were more traditional farmhouse. There was a milk jug, this beautiful piece of wall art that I absolutely love. So be sure to check that out if you missed it. But I saw more in that catalog that I would love to buy if I had all the money that I ever wanted. And these are more of a modern farmhouse, even leaning into a boho feel. And I just, I had to make these too. So this week, those are the DIYs that I'm gonna show you and I really hope you like them. If you're new to my channel, welcome. Thank you so much for stopping by. If you like what you see, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Everybody hit that notification bell so you'll be ready when my next video comes out. And when the video is over, head down to the comments and let me know which DIY was your favorite or just say hi and give this video a big thumbs up. Okay guys, it's time to craft. So I'm gonna start out with this Hello Sunshine sign. I loved the natural fibers in it, the bamboo, the wood, everything except the price. So mine's not going to be an exact replica, but it's definitely going to capture the feeling of the inspiration piece. So I'm gonna start out with these two canvases from the Dollar Tree. I used a flathead screwdriver to pry up the staples and a needle nose plier to pull them out and that allowed me to remove the canvas. So I'm going to remove those corner staples and take out this little side piece. Now what I noticed was that the frame actually had one side that was longer than the other so I just lined up a ruler, made sure that my two ends would end up being even drew a line where I needed to cut and I just sawed away. If you have a jigsaw or some other power tool, this step might be even easier for you. So I did that to both sides and once that was done, I went ahead and sanded the edges. Now guys, what I did forget to mention in the beginning is make sure that you have two frames that are the exact same because look at this. The wood on these two frames were two drastically different sizes even though the canvases were the same size so when you go to the Dollar Tree make sure you look at the wood and see if they're about the same size so I looked at another one of my canvases and I had one that was more similar in size went through the same process to saw off one side and then that fit much better Next, I'm just going to attach these together with some hot glue. If you'd like to put a staple in there, if you have a staple gun, you can do that as well. But for my purposes, the hot glue worked just fine. After my frame was together, I went through with some sandpaper and just made sure that this was as smooth as I could get it. Now some of the pieces of wood had a nice wood grain showing and some were kind of chopped up and eaten up a little bit. So I tried to smooth that out as best I could. I added a few dabs of hot glue at all the joints just to make it a little more sturdy. And then I was ready to start adding more pieces onto my frame. So I used this piece of twine and I wasn't sure how much I needed. So I doubled the length of the frame and I cut four pieces at that size. Now I did end up with a lot of extra afterwards. So you could probably do um, like a length and a half of your frame and that will make it a lot easier to manipulate the the twine as well if you don't have as much extra as I had. Now I tied two pieces of twine together so that gave me two bundles of two and I just glued the knot for each piece of twine right onto the back of my frame. I tried to go about one third of the way down and then go another third of the way down to put the second bundle of twine. It doesn't really matter where you put it. Um, depending on the size of letters that you're gonna want, you might wanna space them out more or put them closer together. You'll see that when we get further along, but you can just kind of eyeball it and see where you want it. Next, I used these bamboo skewers and I had to cut a lot of these. I was able to get about two 
lengths out of each bamboo skewer and I just wanted to make sure that it fit right onto the back of my frame. So you guys, I didn't count these, but I would say I ended up doing 50 or 60, which would be about 25 or 30 skewers altogether that I cut. Next, I wanted to open up my twine and place the bamboo skewer right in the middle of the two pieces of twine. I'm gonna show you this closer up. Sometimes I struggle for words to describe things, so I hope I'm being clear, you guys. But you wanna glue your skewer right in between two, your two pieces of twine. Once you get your skewer in there, you're going to crisscross your twine, so you're going to put the top, the one that was on the top is gonna to go to the bottom, but you also want to rotate a little bit. So the one that was on the left, you will bring to the right. I didn't do this at first and I realized that it made a much sloppier look. And when I started switching top to bottom and left to right, it made a nice pattern. And you can kind of see that if you look down at those first few that I did, the stitches are kind of all over the place. But as I progressed, I was able to make them look much more uniform and make them kind of all stay in the same line just by doing that simple little left to right twist. So you're going to add your skewers, then you're going to crisscross your twine, kind of rotate it a little bit left to right, and then add your next one. Now, I was doing this off of memory. I hadn't looked at my inspiration piece in about a week when I started. The inspiration piece did have all the bamboo skewers much closer together. So that's another option if you want to do the same process but put them together so you don't see as much in between, that is an option too. So you're going to continue like that all the way to the end of your picture frame. You wanna cover every piece of it and then once you put your last piece in, you're just going to tie a simple knot and snip off the extra twine. We want to go ahead and glue down our last knot, but before you do that, go ahead and straighten up all your stitches, making sure it's in a nice straight row and your final knot is going to be glued directly across from your initial one. And this is just gonna give us a much cleaner look when we're finished. And then we're gonna just do the same thing with the other side. I love that in the inspiration piece, it was a little bit whitewashed. So we're gonna take some white paint and I just used some chalk paint. I diluted it with water, about 50% paint and 50% water. And then I'm gonna just brush that over my frame. The beautiful thing about these canvas frames from Dollar Tree is that they do have a wood frame. So you get to see that wood grain through it. And I just wanted to make sure that I kept that little detail. So I did the entire outside of the frame and then I went through and I just quickly went over the skewers in the middle and my twine and this gave it a very neat whitewashed look. Now I did not have on hand any words that said hello spring, but I did have this metal word that came out of a pack that I got from Easter time at Dollar Tree and they have them for all seasons. This one says blessings, and honestly, I feel like that's a sentiment I could use all year round, so I went ahead and used it. Next, I'm gonna use a dry brushing technique to give this a little bit of an aged effect. That means I'm going to put some brown paint on my sponge, I'm gonna brush almost all of it off, and then I'm gonna lightly go around the edges and just give a little bit of that brown all around the edges. You guys, since this is a white project, it's kind of white on white, this does help the letters to pop out, but you don't wanna to be too heavy handed about this. This is just to give it a little bit of weathering. Now I was ready to go ahead and glue this down in the middle. I went ahead and eyeballed it, saw where I wanted it to go, and then I just added a little bit of hot glue and stuck it right on to my frame. I could not be happier with how this came out. This cost me $2 in canvases. I already had the skewers and the twine and the blessings came in a pack of three for a dollar. So really, it only cost me 33 cents. I just think this piece is beautiful. Next, I saw this jute rug and I love the circular pattern and I thought it was gorgeous, but for $50, 
I knew I could make it for a much more affordable price. So this has been my favorite twine to buy. I got this on Amazon and it's been a few different prices, but it's anywhere between $8 and $10. And it's a lot more than you can get at Dollar Tree. However, you could get the nautical rope from Dollar Tree, unravel the three strands of the rope and go through this same process and you would end up with a beautiful rug as well. So what I did was I took my twine and I just put a little bit of glue right at the edge, folded it over, and then I just started wrapping and gluing, wrapping and gluing in a circular pattern. And I continued like this for a long time. There was a lot of wrapping going on for this project. Now, what you do want to make sure of is that you keep the same side facing you the whole time because that side is probably going to have more of the glue kind of coming out um, from in between the ropes. And so you want to make sure that all your glue is coming out on the same side. This way you'll have kind of like an ugly side and a pretty side. So the inspiration piece was three feet across and I made mine to be about two feet and that's all I needed for the area that I was covering. So in order to do that, I kept twisting until I had this center piece here, which is about 12 inches and three quarters. So it's almost 13 inches across in diameter. So on the day I made this rug, my kids probably thought I was their crazy crafting mommy because I was walking around the house with this spool of twine and hot glue because I needed to make 12 of these little circles. <laughs> Next, I needed to attach the smaller circles onto the larger circle. So I flipped it over to my ugly side and I just glued all those tiny little circles onto my inner piece. I did try to face the ending point down and that part would be glued to the inner circle. That left a nice smooth circular edge all around the outside of my rug. Once I had it completely covered, I just went over all the joints where all the little pieces were connected and put a little dab of hot glue just to make sure it was nice and secure. Next, I was ready for my last step in making this rug. So I just started by gluing the twine onto one of the circles and I continued around that way until I got all the way around my rug. And then I just kept wrapping and wrapping. I think I did about five rows four or five rows if you make your inner circle bigger and your smaller circles are bigger than mine i would say that you would need to go around the outside even more times than i did once you're finished you just snip off the end and you're going to put a little dab of hot glue all the way down to the end to make sure that your rug does not unravel what I like to do at the very tip, and I did this on the circles too, is I'll put just a little dab of hot glue, wait a moment for it to cool down, please guys, don't burn your fingers. And when it's cool but still pliable, I'll just pinch it off and make sure it's nice and smooth. And that's it. I did do a final count here guys, and I did 13 of those outer circles, not 12. But I absolutely love the way this came out. This came together for about $15. I used a roll and a half for the size that I did, which was a little bit smaller than the inspiration piece, but still, it is just beautiful. Now, I think this last DIY is my favorite. I loved this lantern. I loved the beads that were on it, but the $40 price tag, I did not love. So I used these little frames and I've used these before guys. I did a DIY recently where I did a planter um, out of these frames. I had to pop out that inner lining for that DIY. So I had some of these little pictures that I had popped out of the frames already on hand. So in order to make it a solid box, I went ahead and glued those pictures right in. If you don't have extra pictures, you could always grab a project board, cut a square, and build out your blocks that way. I ended up doing both of them even though you don't see it here, and I also got some mason jar lids and glued them together so that they wouldn't come apart. If I was able to just run out, of the, out to the store like I normally would, I would probably go and see if I could find maybe some circle blocks or anything like that, but these did the job in a pinch. 
So because these were black and brown and I wanted them to kind of match the light wood on the beads that I had, I went ahead and painted them white. And you'll see in a little bit, this made it very easy to give that wood look without having to do a lot of different layers of paint. So I used white chalk paint and covered both my boxes and my mason jar lids completely with white paint. Once they were covered, I was ready to start assembling the top and bottom of my lantern. So I needed to glue my mason jar lids right in the middle of my two boxes. Now if you used project board to build out your boxes, this next little detail won't matter, but if you did it exactly as I did and you used extra pictures, one side will be completely flat, so you'll put the mason jar on the completely flat side the other side of one of your boxes will be raised a little and you want to put the other mason jar lid on that raised side this is because we want the sides that we're going to see the most often to be nice and smooth and the mason jar lid on the bottom can be on the raised side because we won't see it Next, we're ready to decide how tall we want our lantern to be. So what I did was I put the candle inside that I intended to use. I grabbed a bamboo skewer and I just gave it about an inch or two above the candle and I cut my skewer to that length. I cut eight skewers in all using that same length to make sure that all of my sides would be the same height. Now the inspiration piece did have two of the beaded columns and one solid wood column per side on it and if you wanted to do it that way you could grab one of the toilet bowl plungers that they have at Dollar Tree cut it down to size and use that for your solid column however I am all about the beads so I went all in on the beads and I wanted all eight of my columns to be using the beads so after I had all of my skewers cut to size, I grabbed some beads and these are just some that I got off of Amazon. They do have some at Dollar Tree, but I use these so often that I like to buy them in bulk because it is much more affordable. And I just threaded the beads right onto my skewers. Mine ended up being about 15 beads long, but depending on the size of your beads and how tall you decided you wanted your lantern to be, that might change. You just want to make sure that the bottom bead is completely covering the bottom of the skewer and your top bead is completely covering the top. This will make it much easier to glue together when we get to that step because the tops of the beads are much more flat and easy to glue than the pointy part of the skewer. Once I had all of my beads on my skewers, I was ready to paint them. I used this Waverly chalk paint and I did the same process where I diluted this into water about 50% paint and 50% water. This created a stain which looked beautiful on my beads. So I just painted that right onto my beads and then wiped it off with a paper towel and it gave a stained wood effect where I could still see the wood grain in the beads without having to have an extra bottle of stain around. I used that same watered down paint and I painted on my box making sure to go in the same direction up and down and in the same direction when I did the sides of my box. Now because I watered this paint down when it dried it kind of looked like wood grain because it was white you could see the white coming through so I didn't even need to come back through and do the dry brushing technique to give it that little bit of extra texture. It just looked like wood on its own when it dried. The diluted paint did not stick as well to the metal on the mason jar lid so I just went back and used the plain old chalk paint without watering it down on that part and that covered it very well in about one to two coats of paint. So once all that dried, I was ready to assemble my lantern. I took my box that had the flat side without the mason jar lid and I made that the bottom of my lantern so that that raised side is pointing down and no one will ever see it. And all I did was put a little dab of hot glue on the bottom of my column of beads and I held it there until it was steady and then I did the same thing in all four corners of my box. Now I'm going to come back through with my remaining four columns of beads and I'm just going to put them right in the middle of the ones that I have in the corners. I just eyeballed it to see where the middle point was. After I got that done, my lantern was almost complete. I put my candle right in the middle and this is just an LED candle that I got from Walmart. Please guys don't use this for real candles. This is just for decoration only. 
Before I put the top on, I wanted to add that little detail that they had on there, which was a rope handle. So I just took a little extra piece of the twine that I had from my carpet that I just made, and I tied a little knot on it and glued it right onto my mason jar lid. This was a really cute detail to put on the top, and I love that little pop of natural fiber that it added to the top. Once I had that done, I just laid my top of my lantern right on top. I want to be able to pull that candle out. I plan to decorate this for holidays and things like that. You could hot glue it on there and it would stay on there for good. And I just think this is simply lovely. So I have to say that my favorite DIY out of all of these was that lantern. I absolutely love it because I love things that I can switch up for the season. I intend to put some greenery in there for Christmas, maybe some pumpkins around it for Thanksgiving. I love that it has kind of that farmhouse feel, but it's leaning into boho with the beads and everything. I just, I love everything about it. Head down to the comments and let me know which one was your favorite. So one of the unexpected things about staying at home right now is how busy I am. I don't know about you guys. Let me know down in the comments if you've been experiencing anything unexpected, whether it's good or challenging, but I did not expect to be this busy. I thought I would be able to do fun little projects with the kids and my house would be immaculate and I would check everything off the to-do list. No, that is not the case. The kids are homeschooling. There's six people home at all times, so the house is kind of a disaster. But I have been learning to slow down, to give myself some grace, and to jump back into those crock pot meals that I used to do when I was working, you know, 40 hours a week. So the recipe that I wanna share with you guys is this recipe for apple coleslaw. Anytime we do barbecue chicken, crock pot pulled pork, anything like that, we make this coleslaw. The kids eat it up, my husband requests it. Anytime I take it to a picnic, it is gone and people ask for the recipe. And honestly, it's just been one of those comfort foods for us during this time. So I wanted to share it with you. I know it's not the treat that I normally do, but believe me, you're gonna want this recipe. So it's time to eat. This recipe is quick, easy, and delicious. My favorite kind of recipe. So I just use the bag coleslaw mix. You can chop your own cabbage if you'd like. And then we're gonna make our own sauce. So I need a third cup of brown sugar, a third cup of mayonnaise, and I'm just gonna put a few squeezes of lemon juice right into the sauce. I'm gonna mix that all together until it's nice and smooth and all the clumps of brown sugar have come out of it. Next, we're going to add some scallions, some chopped red bell pepper, a red apple chopped up, and a yellow or green apple chopped up. You can do this to taste, guys. However much veggies you like in it, that's what you should go with. You kind of cook with your heart on this one. Last, we're gonna add our sauce in, mix it all together, and that is it. This is sweet, it's crunchy, it's got that little bit of spiciness from the green onions, and it's just the perfect balance with any kind of barbecue and the perfect comfort food. I hope you enjoyed the DIYs I had for you today. Don't forget to head down to the comments, let me know which one is your favorite, give this video a thumbs up, and subscribe if you like what you see. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time when we repeat it all again.